Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial on isometric tile maps in Godot. Now, in the previous two tutorials, we've been making use of an asset pack from Kenny Delanel that has a different sprite for every tile. Sometimes, though, you're also faced with tile sheets, a little bit like this one. Now, that works a little bit differently, and at the same time, it opens up the opportunity for auto tiling and atlas tiles. So, let's have a look at that how we can make a tile sheet into a tile map, make it look great and make use of those features. Let's get started. Now for this tutorial, I'll be making use of this Grasslands tile sheet for that Clint Belanger uploaded to opengameart.com. You can use this even commercially in your projects if you so desire, as long as you give the proper attribution to the artist according to the license. Now, this is a tile set that makes use of 64 by 32 base on a symmetric grid. So that's important for our settings in Godot. When you scroll down here, you got the grasslands tiles.png right there. And if you download that, you get something like this. Now make sure you drag this into your Godot project folder so you can access it in the Godot editor. Now, when we are in the Godot editor, let's have a look at how we set that up. Right here, I got a towel sheet example. It's a Node 2D. That's what we will be making, a towel sheet example. And I've added a child to it, a towel map. I've already set the mode to isometric. And I've already set up the cell size to 64 by 32, just like Clint Belanger said in his description. Now, when we actually want to create this tile map or this, make use of this tile sheet, we're going to go to the tile set and we're going to go to new tile set. And when we click on that, the tile set editor will open. It may not pop open big like this for you. That can be done with the button on the right hand corner down here with the two arrows. So it might open up like this. You make it bigger like this and you probably want to because some workspace in this tile set editor is kind of convenient. Now in the file system right here, you can see that I've dragged my grasslands tiles.png into this uh, folder location and I can drag this to this area right here. When I do that, it will import a PNG file as a tile set. Now, as you can see, I got a, a little bit of a, of a grid here, but that grid doesn't really match up with the tile. So we got to set up the snapping options first so we can select the different regions from this tile set. We can do that by first creating a new single tile and just selecting pretty much anything, doesn't matter what. The moment you do that, this snap options pops open. If it doesn't, just click this snap, snap option right here and we can set the step with which it should snap. Now, of course, this tile set being 64 by 32 grid, when we do that, you can see that we can actually exactly start selecting the, uh, the tiles that we want to. So now when I select this tile and I would just press single, new single tile, press another one, press another one, we've now created two tiles or have now selected two regions to be determined as tiles within our tile set. Now, if we go back to the tile map, you will see that those free grass tiles are now available for us to select and to draw. And just as always, you can use the bucket fill on the top and the pencil to draw individual tiles. Now, you probably don't want to use this like this because when you have this tile map, you can make, or tile sheet, I should say, you can make use of auto tiling. So let's continue with all the tiling next. Do you want to learn how to make games? Or do you want to learn more about Godot? Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on any videos. Also, if you're curious about the game development that I do myself within Godot, I live stream my game development sessions every Tuesday and Thursday on Twitch. The link, the description, the details all in that description box below. And now let's continue. Now to start auto tiling, we're first going to be deleting this grass. I mean, this is very repetitive and we're going to make an auto tile system to make sure that repetition is out of here. So with the, uh, the uh, bucket pane, I'm going to right click it to delete tiles. You right click and all is gone. Now we're going to go back into the tile set editor. I'm going to select a tile sheet and we'll be deleting these regions with the trash icon here because we no longer need these. Now we're going to set up a new auto tile and we're going to select a couple of these grass tiles. I'm not going to use all of them. This is just an example. You can expand on this yourself if you'd like to. Now with auto tile, we've got four extra tabs right here and we'll be using a couple of these for demonstration. First of all, let's start with icon. Icon is basically the tile which is going to be the icon in the editor when you're painting. So if you want a, a certain tile that's very recognizable for you, you can use that. 
For priority, this is going to be determining what the priority is for each town. Normally, this is just set to be entirely equal, but if you feel like one tower is standing out a little bit more than the others and you feel like that shouldn't be used as often as the others, you can set the priority right here and thereby you can change how the auto tiling system is going to uh, deviate between the percentage of tiles which it's using. And then lastly, we have the bit mass. The bit mass determines which tiles can be connected together. So basically a bit mass can be set up in a two by two grid or a three by three grid. And basically what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be painting them. So when we're painting these and with isometric, you gotta imagine that a 45 degrees rotated, of course. So basically what we're doing now is that this tile will be underneath here. Basically it will be drawn in this area right here. And by doing so, you can see that this red piece will be connecting with this red piece right there. So red and red connect, and then the auto tile system knows, okay, I can connect these two together. So with that done, we can go back into the tile map. You can see we only have one grass tile image right here now, because that's what's the auto tile, uh, that's what the auto tile icon that we selected. Now, if we, without bucket fill with the pencil, if we paint a couple of these tiles and we bucket fill them up, you can see that now it has used different grass tiles every now and then. And now the grass doesn't look as repetitive as it used to just a moment ago. And especially if we add vegetation and stuff like that to this tile with all this grass, it will look considerably better. Now, for demonstration, I'm going to make a little bit of a bigger piece. This is not for demonstrating this grass tile system, but it's going to be for what we'll be doing next because we'll be making a nice pond. So I'll bucket fill it all up and that looks pretty good. Now with that done, let's add some vegetation to this. And when we're adding the vegetation, I can demonstrate to you how the Atlas tile is working. So let's get into that. To get auto tiling, we're first going to go back to the tile set. We're going to select the tile sheet. And as you can see right here, we got a couple of vegetation tiles. However, these vegetation tiles, they're bigger than 64 by 32. They're actually 64 by 64, but that's no problem. We're first going to go to new atlas. And with that, we're going to select a region of tiles. So we're not selecting individual tiles. We're selecting a region of tiles. And of course, this is now a 64 by 32 snap. That's still okay, as long as we set the sub tile size here. So we're gonna set that to 64 by 64 so that the Atlas tile knows how to draw or cut out the different tiles from this uh, region that we have selected. Now we can also, just like with the other tile, we can select an icon that we want to use, for example, these flowers. And what we can also do, we can also set the name. We could have done that with the auto tiling system as well. For example, call that Grasslands Auto. Um, but for this time, we're gonna go with, uh, let's just go with veggies. Huh? These, are, these are the veggies of the world. So with that rename to veggies, we can go back to tile map. And now you can see we got a category veggies that is with the icon. And when I click that, a pop-up here opens up. Then I can select all the individual tiles that the Atlas tile has cut out from that region we selected. Now, if I were to add these to the world, you can see that we are now removing something from the world. We're removing a tile because we're still working on the same tile set. So I'm gonna undo that with Control Z. We're gonna rename this to grass or maybe to ground, that's even better. And then we'll be adding another tile map to this. Now that tile map will rename to veggies. And that veggie style, of course, we're gonna set it up isometric 64 by 32. And with um, the ground tile selected, we're gonna to go to the tile set editor because we have to save that resource because we want to reuse it. So in the tile set editor, you got a little save button up there. So we're gonna save this as, I'm gonna save it in my folder resources. I'm gonna save it as the example um, sheet tile sheet example, that's the right name. So with that, we can go back to the veggies node. And now with the tile set where we, in the first one, created a new tile set, now we can load that tile set that we just saved on the resources, tile sheet example dot tress. Now with that opening up, you can immediately see I got my auto grasslands and my veggies. And when I got my veggies selected, I can now draw 
things on the map. But you can see that we get a little bit of an offset because the veggie is drawn just below the towel. Sounds really weird, right? Veggie. It's okay. We'll just call this uh, vegetation then. So you can see that the vegetation is drawn one towel below. So let's fix that now. In the towel set, editor we are selecting our region and we can now say that the texture offset is a minus 32 that's the entire height of one towel now with that set you can now see that we are now drawing exactly in the towel that uh, we are having our mouse over and you can see that the uh, the higher tiles are now drawn over it instead of under it so with that, we can make our world richer, but what would make our world more richer than a little bit of a pond? That would be nice. So let's start working on that pond. Then we can also take another look at the uh, auto tiling system. We can do that again. We can also have a look at how we can add cliffs, which sort of kind of fake the depth of, uh, of this map. And I can show you how I'm also ordering my map notes in order to draw both the vegetation next to the pond as well as in the pond. So let's do that now. To start off with the water, we're going to go to the uh, tile sheet editor again because we have to find the water first. And the water tiles are they're right here. These are the water tiles. So I'm going to create a new auto tile. I'm going to select a couple of these water tiles. Don't need too many. Don't have to set the icon. I do have to set the bitmask. So we're going to be drawing the bitmask. All of these water tiles can touch each other. That's all no problem. And we set the sub tile is already set to the right size. And we're going to rename these to water underscore auto. With that, we can go back to the ground because we can replace the grass with the water. And we're going to be drawing up a little bit of a pond here. And you can see that the grass immediately changes as we are drawing these uh, these water tiles as the auto tiling system is determining like what can I uh, put next to each other and what can I put next to each other. Um, so we get a little bit of a pond here. Let's not make it too complex. And now we need to add some cliffs to that, some sort of side, some sort of slope. And the tile set also has those within it. These are right here and they've given us eight sprites um, for both straight inner corner and outer corners, two variations for each kind. So to, we give it a little bit of variation and we don't get a lot of, um, a lot of repetition. So to get these in, I'm going to make use of Atlas um, tiles again to demonstrate that again. So we'll be selecting these, uh, these sprites. We're making sure that we set the sub tile size again to 64 by 64. So the, uh, he knows how to cut these uh, images out. Uh, and we'll give this a name that will be nice. So we're going to call these water cliffs and we call these uh, the straight ones. These are, uh, well, they are straight. Don't make jokes. Don't make jokes, guys. Then we're going to create another atlas. We'll be selecting these. We'll again say this is 64 by 64. And you are going to be our water cliffs and you are the inner corners. And then we'll create another atlas. We'll select these. We'll again say your 64 by 64 subtile size and you are going to be our water cliffs outer corners. Now with those selected, we're going to go back to the map, but we need we need something else. We need something, uh, another, another tile map to get this all drawn in the way that we want to draw it. So we're going to rename this and we're going to call these our water cliffs. And in water cliffs, again, we're going to set up isometric. We set the cell size 64 by 32. And we again load that resource that we have right there. And as you can see, we got now um, three um, extra atlases, the water corner inner, outer, and the straight ones. Now, what I'll be doing, I'll be dragging this out to exactly four by four. So I have these nice underneath each other. And I usually start with the inner corners when I have to draw around something. And I usually start, when I draw this all out, I usually start with the top four if I'm giving a variation in a, in a tile sheet. And then I'll add the variation using the bottom four. So I'll be using only with the top four first. So first we'll be doing the, uh, the outer corner. So we got an outer corner. So with these outer corners, you can see that we sort of have the same problem as we had with our vegetation in that we are um, drawing this tile, but this tile is touching the ground like one tile below the actual tile that we're drawing or the tile that we have our mouse in. So let's first fix the offset of our 
water cliffs and giving them all just like the vegetation an offset oh, not of so little of minus 32 so with that done we should be able to draw you can see these are jumping up now but now we should be able to draw these corners out um, exactly on the tiles that they should be touching so that's the outer corners then we're going to do the inner corners and we don't need that one and we got this one and then we'll be doing the uh, straight parts and again with shift i've said that before in another tutorial you can draw straight lines if you worry about um, you know what sometimes you accidentally shift one out over with your mouse button just hold shift and you, you can't do that you can only draw straight lines and you can just release your mouse so that makes things a little bit faster so there we go we draw that part we draw this part we got this one there oh I actually take the wrong one and this one there so now that we got that in I'm gonna draw up a little bit of variation using the other corners so every time we're using something double I like to use a different version for example D this one and this one are exactly the same so I'll draw this one in here and also we got two corners exactly the same on this side so I'll use one of these to replace the other for the outer corners we actually don't have a lot of uh, doubling for the uh, straight pieces of course we have quite a lot so I'm gonna be drawing a couple of these things over with our variation that way we don't have the amount of repetition that we currently have within the uh, water clips so with that done it looks a little bit better we now can use the grassland tiles and we can draw right on the side here to get us a little bit get us rid of the dark spot however as you can see these are already taken. If I, if I draw up here, I'm drawing over the actual cliffs that we have already drawn. So we've got to make sure we put that in a different node to make sure that that all comes together as one whole piece. So I'm going to be adding another child, not a tile map. And basically we'll make again isometric cell 32. We'll be loading that up in the resources, the tile sheet example, and then we can use the grass yes the grass to then draw up the edges here to make that all look neat now the veggies is a sort of the same story like if we draw for example this piece here into the veggies that's all possible it looks good it's behind it however if we were to draw this up here you can see that the cliff is cutting off the head of the uh, vegetation because the water cliff is lower than the vegetation um, uh, node so what we got to do is we got to pretty much um, well yeah just add another water tile map we can actually not copy because there's already tiles in here so I would not suggest you copy um, or duplicate that node and just add a new one we also load the tile sheet example and this can be called um, the renamed the water cliffs and I usually call these the grass sites or the ground uh, sites this is a, a common thing that I do and then for the other one I'll call these the um, veggies um, and these are going to be the veggies in the front and these will be renamed the veggies behind and of course it's only behind in the case that you're drawing them specifically in the next to cliffs it's not always behind for example these veggies right here they're not behind or in front of anything but they are there so with these veggies in front we can now draw in the veggies in front we can draw this sort of art up here make that look nice and then when we are on this side we can take the veggies behind and make sure that these water plants are hidden behind the cliffs as we would want them to be looking so with that our pond comes together uh, in the front side there let's put a piece in there as well so now we've got a little bit of a pond that we can uh, we can uh, sort of have fun with <laughs> 
We can also extend this much further, or you can, maybe that's a good idea for this tutorial when you're following this. You can always go back into the tile sheet and maybe also make use of these cliffs here. You can see there's a water under the, on the button, there's a cliff on the side, and then you can add a little bit of a, uh, a sort of walkway over the water. You can add a boat to it as well. You can do a lot of things. I suggest you, you just experiment a little bit with this tile set. It actually has a lot of options. You can add fences, you can also connect those together, tents, you can put campfires. Uh, um, if you're working on tile set, learning how to work with tiles and specifically a tile sheet or also with auto tiles and atlas tiles, definitely take this tile set and use it to your, uh, to your best capabilities to make uh, something that looks really amazing. Um, for the finish of this tutorial, let's go back to the tile sheet. And what I actually want to do is I want to put a character in here because I want to demonstrate what we're going to be doing in the next episode. We're going to take scene, we're going to take the player scene, and we're going to put the player in here. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think we should be able to play that. Yeah, we got to save it. I'm not going to save it in resources, but in scenes. I'm going to save it there. And I believe we should be able to walk around now. Yeah, we don't have animation yet. So what we're going to be doing in the next episode is we're going to be taking this character. And right now I can just walk into and over the water. It's like uh, it's like a little Jesus that can walk on water. Or was it not Jesus? I'm not sure. What we're going to be doing in the next episode is we're going to be adding collision shapes using that tile map editor to this to make sure that uh, we are not... Uh, walking into this water and that we actually are feeling like okay we, we can't walk further here and we're just being blocked in our in our path. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode. I'll see you then. That's it for today guys. Hope you like it. If you did smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. Like I said we'll be working on collision shapes in the next video. I hope to see you then and until then keep on coding, keep on gaming. See you later guys.